My name is Muriel Siki. I am at ETH Zurich, and I will be with you today to guide you through today's program. It will be a technical challenge and a new experience for all of us. The organizers have worked very hard to put together a virtual program, a digital platform, which we hope will be just as thought-provoking and instructive as the past traditional events. For those who have participated in our tech forums, you know that exchanges are vital. And even though we are digital today, we will hopefully maintain a sense of belonging throughout the program, which will include keynote speakers, roundtable discussions, parallel sessions, which will enable you to exchange with the participants. When you signed up for the forum, you received access codes to register on the platforms Slack and Remo. This will enable you to ask your questions to our keynote speakers and to vote for the Artec Prize. And you also have to register. You have to be registered on these platforms. It's not too late. You can still do it during the form forum. Check your emails. You should have gotten all the information in an email this morning, and I think you got one also earlier this week. If for your questions, you have to go through Slack. At the end of the program, we will grant the fourth Art Tech Prize to one of the eight innovative startups selected by an international jury. You will determine uh, the winner of this prize by giving them your vote. I hope it won't be like the U.S. elections and that we will have a clear winner today. If you haven't seen their pitch, you can see them on the YouTube channel and on the Art Prize and right here during the breaks and the parallel sessions. As you're all aware, we're going through a very difficult and uncertain time. It is especially challenging for the world of the arts and culture. In this context, new technologies, artificial intelligence, have become essential. During today's forum, we will rethink how to produce and access culture in today's new normality. We have to reinvent ourselves. We have to be more creative. To start us off, I will ask Patrick Ebicher, President Emeritus of the École Polytechnique de Lausanne and President of the Artec Foundation, and Joël Mezo, President of ETH Zurich, to welcome all of you. Thank you, Muriel. A warm welcome to the Artec Forum. This is our fourth edition after the one we held at EPFL in Lausanne at the ED, at the Haute Ecole d'Art et de Design in Geneva, and last year, memorable meeting at the Chini Foundation in Venice. This year, we had planned to meet physically uh, on the campus of ETH, but obviously COVID changed our plans and forced us to go entirely online with the help, the very much help of, uh, appreciated help of ETH Zurich. As frustrating as it can be to meet physically, it is very timely to discuss the future of art and culture while the world is coping with the COVID pandemics. As you know, most likely COVID will become endemic, forcing us to invent a new world, intermingling reduced maybe physical gathering with uh, associated with a digital experience. This year's Art Tech program ambition is to imagine this new world. So we will do it through keynote address, panels, roundtables, and last but not least, our now unique startup competition. We at Art Tech believe that innovation solution will come often from small, small agile startup that need to access capital to scale their ideas and products. And that's why it's very important for you all to vote for them, to give them the kind of encouragement and ability to identify the needed uh, capital for them to thrive. Let me just give you an example. Four years ago, we had a company called Classic Link, a professional network for the classical music concept. Even though at the time people may not have understood exactly why it was useful for, or most useful for, I think the pandemics showed, as you couldn't imagine how it's useful today, to have this kind of direct access with the musician, have a close interaction, private concert at your home that you could share with friends with Zoom, 
this is the kind of new companies and new world that we need to invent. We are very much encouraged by the fact that now several venture capitalists have been uh, put together or are in the, in the making to support uh, those new efforts. And I think of this new investment hypothesis. And I think this is, again, something which is quite unique with this forum. This year also, we welcome the participation of large companies such as Microsoft, who will give, in fact, a keynote address, and Audemars Piguet, the famous Swiss watch maker, both are pioneers in the Artec interface. And it's very encouraging to have the support of those big companies. Four years ago, when uh, Pierre Magistretti, Benedict Ange, and Nathalie Pichard relaunched the Artec Foundation and its forum, we had a feeling that technology was going to profoundly affect the way we create, consume, but also monetize uh, art and culture. In fact, COVID is an incredible accelerator for this adoption of these new products and behaviors. We could say that it could not have been more timely to hold this symposium forum online with the help again of the ETH. Now, I just want to, before finishing, to thank uh, our sponsors, our generous sponsors, ETH Zurich again, who our host, EPFL, who is also very much involved in the area of our tech, the Fondation Ipomen from Geneva, the Audemars Piguet Swiss watchmaker, Creative Shift and Media Deals, Publicis Live, Scale Up Factory. Last but not least, I would like also to thank uh, Nathalie Pichard, the director of the Artec Foundation for having put together this amazing program in such challenging times. And Muriel Siki for having once again accepted to moderate the Artec Forum. So I could just uh, wish you a great forum, this first edition online, even though we know we're gonna work and have to work with this online technology, we, however, hope to see you physically, maybe in a different setting, sometime in the not too long future. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. I wish all of you a warm welcome, even if we are only meeting virtually today. I'm very pleased that this year's edition of the Art Tech Forum is taking place in collaboration with ETH Zurich. Since there are so many close connections between art, science and technology at our institution. Universities are privileged places of knowledge creation and intellectual exchange. They often also house great art collections and museums in close proximity to their scientific activities. ETH is no exception in this respect. I recommend that you pay a visit to the Grafische Sammlung and the Literature Archives of Thomas Mann or Max Frisch the next time you visit ETH. The combination of science and art is today very lively, whether through big orchestras like the Academic Orchestra or the ETH Big Band, or the many members of the ETH community who play an instrument in their spare time. Anna Stern, who is currently completing a doctorate at the Institute for Integrative Biology, is also a writer in this year's final round of the Swiss Book Prize. Now, let us briefly explore a few interfaces between the world of science and culture. The first example I would like to draw your attention to has to do with this person, Professor Raffaello D'Andrea. Not only is he a world-renowned robotics researcher, but he makes forays into the arts with his work. Here are just a few examples. Back in 2008, he created a robotic chair for an exhibition a chair that has a special sense of independence and is capable of disassembling or reassembling itself. 
or let's take the amazing fleet of quadrocopters the Andreas Research Group has been taming for years in the flying machine arena. From this research, the ETH spin-off Verity Studios emerged. The flying robot swarms have been part of several concert tours, from the heavy metal band Metallica to the Canadian singer Celine Dion. A second example stems from ETH Zurich Department of Architecture. Building houses with digital technologies and the imperative of reducing the CO2 footprint in construction have shaped the engineering sciences at ETH. This amazing concrete construction made of knitted formwork was exhibited in Mexico. The technology behind was developed by ETH researcher Mariana Popescu during her doctoral thesis. The digital bamboo pavilion, designed by graduate students, is currently on display in Zurich and explores the innovative combination of naturally grown materials with digital fabrication. This composition of 3D printed columns is the result of an experimental work by Professor Benjamin Dillenburger, who participated in a summer festival in Riom, in the canton Graubünden. Now I will take you from architecture to the fantasy world of Hollywood. In recent years, the technical expertise of the Disney Research Zurich Group have brought science to life in more than a dozen films on the big screen. You may have seen the Star Wars film with the pirate Maz Kanata, and you may have been amazed by the expressiveness of her eyes. The expressive effect was made in Zurich, the work of computer scientists at the ETH Zurich and Disney Research Lab. The same computer scientists were responsible for highly sophisticated computer animation effects in the Disney movie Hulk and in many others. The founding director of the Disney Research Zurich Lab is ETH computer scientist Professor Markus Gross, who has received two tech Oscars for his seminal contributions in computer graphics. The final example brings together computer science, television and biology. Imagine using genetic material to store digital data. What might seem like science fiction is, in fact, the result of an interdisciplinary scientific collaboration on its way to a real-life application. Researchers led by ETH professor Robert Kraas developed a method of storing digitized data in tiny glass beds of DNA. Theoretically, a data volume equivalent to all of Wikipedia's and Facebook's content combined could be stored in a small speck of DNA material for thousands of years. The same researchers recently made the headlines by storing the first season of the new Netflix series Biohackers in DNA. As you can see from these examples, technology and art often go hand in hand, and digital innovation allows for new forms of expression in culture, society, and industry. A major contribution to this cross-fertilization between art and science is shaped by the new companies that come out of university research carrying results into the economy and the society. A recent survey by the University of St. Gallen shows that ETH spin-offs have created around 4,500 jobs, direct jobs, in recent years, and what is particularly fortifying mostly in Switzerland. It comes as no surprise that innovative startups create a bridge between technology and art and are, therefore, part of today's Artec event. 
I'm curious to see who of the finalists will win the Art Tech Prize 2020, and I look forward to interesting discussions and exchanges along the way. Thank you for your interest and stay healthy. Thank you very much, Joel, and thank you, Patrick.